Hello and welcome to VMware vCloud Automation Center 6.0 Define Custom Properties. My name is Eve Sanford, I'm the CEO of the Comdivision Group and you can find me on Twitter with my Twitter handle at Eve Sanford. To get started open a browser and within that browser we are going to head over to the um, UI of our VCAC appliance so that's the appliance name slash shell UI app. Um, from within that, we are going to um, log in then with our VCAC admin user, in our case, um, password as usual. And then once logged in, we will get started. Um, for our demo example, we will create some preliminary um, components like an additional business group reservation and stuff like that. That is just to show you the difference between two different individual business groups and how you can apply properties not only um, to a blueprint, but also apply them to business group reservations and stuff like that. We will show you that with a very, very simple and easy example. Once logged into the system, we are going to switch to the infrastructure tab just to um, set up additional properties for our newly created business group. So let's go into infrastructure then we are going to switch to groups, business groups, and create an additional one. Remember, in one of the videos before, we created already an initial business group containing all our standard parameters um, from the development unit. The next thing now is that we create a business group for our production users. For that, again, we um, click on new business group and define the necessary parameters. We are going to copy over most of the stuff from the existing ones, um, or you could copy it over. We are going to typically quickly type that. So production manager is going to be the name of the group. We are going to define a new machine prefix. You can also do that directly from within that window. Click new machine prefix. We are going to call it uh, prod dash. Uh, digits is going to be three, and we are going to start with the number 101. Um, for that specific group, hit uh, OK. Then you need to define the Active Directory computer. Again, we can Active Directory org unit. We are going to pick that from the previous one. You need to define the um, necessary group manager rules. In our case, that's going to be end group manager. And um, we are also going to re-add our VCAC admin because we want to make sure that the user we are leveraging in any of these labs actually can do all the work. Next, we are going to pick a specific email address that's just necessary. Um, in our case, that's going to be like the domain user, so end group manager at VCAC. Um, or our cap.vdc.cdip.net. We define a support user. Again, support user is um, kind of a normal user. The only main exception is that it can um, act on behalf of a different user. And then finally, we are going to define a specific user role. In our case, that's going to be end user at cap.vdc.cdip.net. Um, again, important to always pick the entries from the um, drop down list and not actually just type them. The next thing is we are going to define a custom property for the folder. This actually steers that whatever is created within this business group is going to leverage that specific folder. In our case, that's going to be a production folder. And um, that's as easy as it could be. Um, so just hit OK uh, once you have entered all the properties to save that specific business group. So now that our business group is created, we need to go back and um, create uh, some additional components. In our case, the next thing we are going for is uh, to define the reservation for these specific um, resources. So um, hit on reservations, define a new reservation. And um, then from there, we can actually um, move on. 
Um, by the way, reservations and business groups are a one-to-n -one, one link. One business group can leverage multiple reservations, but one reservation is always linked back to a specific business group. So let's create one in this case. Again, we pick the same compute resources we leveraged before. So in our case, that's our vSphere cluster, so cap cluster. Um, once that's selected, you will see that the name is automatically populated by the system. You can also fill it by typing in a name. Um, in our case, we are going to call it cap-cluster-rest2. Um, you define which tenant is um, accessible. Um, the resource, uh, the, the business group is defined. And we are also going to um, specify if a specific reservation policy, in our case, compute policy one is used. Priority, as all are going to be the same, uh, we are going to put in priority 10. Next, we switch to the resources tab um, to define the necessary resources. In our case, we will um, just give the system another 8 gigabytes of memory and we are going to allow it to leverage the storage cluster, CapDS cluster, for um, all our data stores. We are also going to define an amount of storage for that specific one. In our case, we are going to give it full access to 100 gigabytes because we are going to leverage SYN um, provisioning anyway and also leverage deduplication and other stuff, but that's on a different story. So select um, the necessary properties, define how much space is going to be given to the specific scenario. In our case, as said, we are going to leverage 100 gigabytes of storage and give it a standard priority of 10. As we only define one storage pool, the priority doesn't really make that much of a difference, but we just need to make sure that all the settings are in sync before we actually um, leave. Next, we head over to the uh, network settings. Um, within the network settings, we are going to define which port group are going to be used. In our case, we are going to leverage the D port group, cap D port group, define which network profile is going to be leveraged, and then we can switch to the alerts tab and make sure that all of this is going to be saved. Once everything is stored, you can see that the resources are assigned. We will go back to the business group and actually define a specific parameter. So um, go back to business groups and um, pick our production group or development group, no matter which one you want to leverage, and just define the additional property over there. We are going to change the development group because that's what we are going to mostly use in all of these systems. So click on edit for that one, wait for it to um, pop up, go to the bottom where you see the um, specific properties of this um, business group and then within these properties define the additional new property we are going to leverage in that specific case. In our case we are going to add a new property which is shown to the user which is called the project ID and um, this way we can enforce the user whenever he requests the machine for the development unit he needs to enter a project ID whenever he does that for the um, production group he doesn't need to do that. So once the record is actually saved, we can switch over to the Administrations tab and um, create the necessary entitlement settings within the VCAC catalog so that um, the specific user requests can be handled by the system. So as I said, switch over to Administration and within the Administration um, go to Groups and uh, catalog management, not groups, go to catalog management and within catalog management we then need to create a specific entitlement for that um, use case. That specific entitlement is going to allow our newly created business group to access the system. For that, um, let's first look at the, at the services again. Um, so within the service um, catalog item, within the service um, for the CentOS, we are going to add an additional machine. Just um, 
which we are going to leverage at a later point. So that's not really important for this specific in case. Go to the entitlements. Within the entitlements, we are going to create a new entitlement um, for our enterprise users or production users. Um, in that specific case, we set it to active again, um, define which business group is going to be leveraged, and um, then add the users. Again, be sure to always pick the users from the menu. Um, shown again we want to have the enterprise group managers get access to that entitlement as well as our vcac uh, as well as the enterprise users and finally also the vcac admin because that's the user we are leveraging in any of these demonstrations hit the next button and now we are going to add the components like we did in the labs before so um just add the necessary service, hit plus for that, that's CentOS in our specific case, just add that specific service and hit the OK button. Once that is completed, go to the catalog items and pick the specific catalog item. Um, in our case that's the CentOS 6.4 small and um, the CentOS second machine, um, small machine, hit OK, and then on the entitled actions, you need to add the specific actions for that use case. So that's going to be all machine and all virtual machine um, actions in our case for this specific use case. So again, there is no select all button, so you really need to go step by step, one by one through all of them. Um, it's not necessarily easy, but it's an open issue and it should be fixed in one of the next releases anyway. So don't worry about it too much. So once you selected all the necessary tasks for all your individual machines, again, hit the OK button and finally add the newly created entitlement. That's basically all you need to do to make this um, newly created system work. Um, for this specific scenario, um, as we made changes to catalogs and entitlements, it's always safe to log out of the system and re-log into the system. So we hit the log out button and then we um, log back into the system with our VCAC admin again. So that's not really the change, but some of the changes are not going to be populated until you actually uh, log out of the system and re-log in. So again, as I said, just log in with VCAC admin, VMware one, two, three, bang again. Hit log in. And once we are in the system, you should hit the catalogs um, tab and you will see that you see um, all machine entries twice in this specific scenario. The reason for that is pretty simple. Based on the fact that we actually um, created a second entitlement and this specific user VCAC admin is in both entitlements, he can see all objects for each individual entitlement. So you can see we have two times the CentOS second small machine and two times CentOS 6.4. This is nothing we worry about for this specific case as normally a user wouldn't be entitled multiple times to the same machine. In our case, that's um, good because that way we can easily show you the different behavior without um, changing anything. First, let's log into the um, and check the development unit machine and request one of those. It should actually ask us for the project ID. So we hit the uh, request button on that specific machine. And as we can see, um, it needs, as usually, a couple of seconds to populate the actual form. Um, but once that specific form is shown, 
we can actually see that the system asks us for a project ID, or hopefully does that. Oh, it doesn't do that for in our specific case, so probably we missed something here. So what we will do next is, is validate why it doesn't show that specific property. And I guess what I forget, forgot is actually what I told you in the lab before is where I said you should actually um, ensure that you have um, set the property to be um, user specific. So let's go back to groups, business groups, and um, let's check back the setting we have done on our production, uh, no, development unit group, so mouse over it, hit edit, and once you're in it, go down to the custom property, and there you can see what exactly what I told you before is missing, the prompt user parameter is missing, so we set this to go, um, confirm our setting by hitting the green check mark, hit OK again, wait for the settings to be applied in the overall environment, go back to our catalog and request again a machine from the development um, unit. So that way it should hopefully be fixed. So click on catalog and then request another machine from over there and see how that actually affects the setting. And as we can see here, um, it actually perfectly shows us that we need a project ID now and that we need to supply that as a user. So scrolling down shows and a project ID that's exactly the way we defined it before. We are not going to request a machine that's good enough for us here. And let's request the same machine from the production managers group. And that one should actually not request that parameter because we haven't set it for that specific one. So you can see that you can easily create multiple custom properties and apply them on different levels, like on reservations, on business groups, but also on blueprints individually for the individual requests and based on that make specific properties. Later on in one of the videos, you will see how we can leverage all of these custom properties for additional systems uh, like talking to VCO workflows, interchange, uh, exchanging information with VCO workflows for us and back. And that's exactly the way how um, you would communicate with external systems. So that's not only how we feed information from the user to the system, but also to workflows and back from workflows and external systems back into the um, environment. Thanks for watching this video. Um, we covered custom properties in a very, very overview approach. We will go back on this later in some of the other videos we produce. My name is Eve Sanford. I'm CEO of the Comdivision Group. You can find me on Twitter at my handle at Eve Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thanks for watching.